Hi, this is Kathy Dam, and I want to show you how I use Zoom to record my videos so that it's an easy process of looking at your PowerPoint and recording. I have used multiple systems and I found this one to be the most straightforward and it works well on my Chromebook. So if you log into Zoom, um, you might see something like this. If you haven't made an account with Zoom, make sure to use your at saddleback.edu account because it will set you up with a CCC confer Zoom uh, resources and there's a bit more added to it than if you just make a Zoom account. Um, and mainly the length of time you can record meetings. Anyway, it's it's a um, <laughs> brain freeze. It is ideal to set it up with your Saddleback account. So I'm going to just click on my image here and I go over to meetings and I'm going to schedule a new meeting. And this meeting, let's say I'm going to do a sample Z. I'm going to talk about a sample Z test. Um, again, it's not really a meeting. This is a lecture. But this is how I can easily record my lecture. Uh, I might say two hours just in case I make a mistake and want to have some time to kind of redo or whatever I need. And then the, the real key piece is you want to scroll down and click on record this meeting uh, automatically. And by recording that, that means you can now download um, the meeting and um, it, it will um, be available for us. I just realized I want to differentiate this from my actual lecture day, so I'll just say, um, so this is our COVID-19 lecture. <laughs> okay, so once I've done that, I can now save. Now, if I'm ready to start, I can just click Start This Meeting. Um, if I'm not ready and I want to go get prepared, then what I could just do is come back later on another day or another time. And when I click on Meetings, it should be listed in here. So here it is, Sample Z-Test COVID. So these are some things I was trying to play around with earlier today. So I am ready to go, so I'm going to click Start. Now, you will have to load something from your browser, but it works well with um, Chrome. So don't worry about... Um, the, you know, it being a difficult load. So I'm going to open Zoom. I've actually been pleased with how easy this works with my Chromebook at home, so I'm not limited. I don't have to come into work to do this if, if something's, I need to do it at midnight. All right, so I've loaded um, Zoom. I want to join with my computer audio. Now listen. This meeting is being recorded. So I immediately The paused. recording has stopped. When it says this meeting is being recorded, as soon as she stops saying recorded, it starts recording. So I immediately will pause it so that I can get myself oriented. So now nothing's being recorded and I'm just kind of orienting myself. Now I want to come over here and see if I'm, it's recording my audio because you don't want to go to all this work and then it was never recording your audio to begin with. So I can tell it's recording my audio because this green line is going up and down. If that isn't going up and down, you want to click on this uh, up arrow thing and mess around with these settings and test your speaker and microphone. Um, so now that I'm really ready to go, I want to pick the screen that I would like my students to see. I don't want them to see my whole desktop because that's not the purpose. I would like them just to see my PowerPoint. So I'm going to switch over to my PowerPoint slides and now I'm going to make them viewed as um, as my PowerPoint would be viewed normally. So this is, um, for you, I've kind of smooshed the screen, but I, this is how my PowerPoint looks just full screen. So this is what I want. So that's now available to me um, to put, pick as a screen. So now I'm just gonna go back to Zoom and say share screen, and I'm going to find my PowerPoint show. And so I can see here's my slideshow being presented. So that's the screen I want them to see. So that means no matter what else is happening on the screen, all they see is my PowerPoint. So I'm going to share that. Now, again, all my students see is the, the PowerPoint. They don't see what might be happening up here. That's just for me to see. Now that I feel ready to go, I'm going to click up here and resume recording. This meeting is being recorded. So here I want to say, Hi everybody, welcome to Sample Z. This is going to be a lot of fun. And here's our first slide. We're going to talk about some fun things. So I might just go through my slides as I normally would. Things will be, come up as PowerPoint, um, any kind of animations you have already. When I need to pause for a moment, let's say I need to think, I can come up here to say more and pause recording. The recording has stopped. And maybe I need to re figure out what it is I need to fix, or, oh, shoot, where's that example? When I'm ready to go, I can record again. This meeting is being recorded. 
And let's say that I make a mistake, uh, a mistake that the student, you know, typical mistakes are okay, but let's say I really make a mistake and I say, mm, did standing in line make students perform better? Uh, oh wait, no, I'm not supposed to say did. My, it does standing in line, oh shoot, darn, I made a mistake. So what you should do is give a very long pause after that mistake. That was an example of my very long pause. When you have a long pause after your mistake, you can easily go into the video later and cut out that mistake. If you roll right into the way it should be, it's kind of hard to find the line to cut. But if you pause, it gives you some wiggle room as to telling the video maker uh, where to cut. And I do that in YouTube. So once I've loaded my video to YouTube, I can cut my mistakes out. But I would say don't worry about it too much. I fumble all the time and I think students think it's funny. So don't worry about um, something that's kind of would be making you look like a human, but if you make a mistake you're afraid is going to confuse students, then that would be the way to do it is to give it a long pause and then you can cut it out later. So let's say I'm done with my slides and I'm done with this particular point of the video and I want to stop it, I would come up to more and hit stop recording. It says, are you sure? I say yes. The recording has stopped. So now nothing is being um, recorded. And I do want to come back and escape so I can come back to my Zoom. Here's my Zoom window. And um, let's say I wanted to do a second part of the video. I could restart all over again. I could share a different part of my screen and I could start recording. It would make a second video. If I'm totally done, I'm just ready to be done, I can close out of the meeting and that would end it for all. And now I want to show you what it looks like when I go back to my Zoom account. So I'm just going to hit the back button. And so here you'll see um, the, oh sorry, this is the list of meetings. I want to go to recordings. And here you're going to see the list of videos that are that were made. And these were two I was practicing with earlier. Now you see that for the one we were just doing, COVID-19, it's processing it. It's because it's trying to transcribe me. So it's not ready for me to download. It, it doesn't take very long. It might just be worth going to grab a cup of coffee and uh, you know go about your business. Um, but when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, this is an example of, um, actually maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do this one so it's not too confusing and then I'll show you what this is. So if I click on sample Z, um, this is, it says three files, but it's one recording. If you're not sure if this is the recording you want, you can click on this play button and it'll show you what it looks like. So we're going to do an example of a sample Z. So you can see that it's giving you an attempt at transcription over here. Um, and then this is the PowerPoint that I was looking at there. Um, and actually this was not PowerPoint, it was a different system, but don't worry about that. It could look the same if it were PowerPoint. So if this is the video that I wanted, then I want to download that file. And when you click download, it's actually going to ask you to download three files. And let me explain what those three files are. So you see them listed here. And I'll, I'm going to show them to you in a list view. But what I'm pointing out is really the only thing I need is the video file because I want to upload that to YouTube. Or you could upload it directly into your Canvas course shell. Um, if I have this video file, that's all I need. The M4A file, that's your audio file. It's already synced in your video file, so you don't need to download both. Um, but let's say you just wanted to provide audio, like you're making a podcast. That would be your audio file. The VTT file, that's your transcript. I have not had a need for the transcript because I go and load it into YouTube. YouTube does a good job and then I just edit it from within YouTube. However, at some point, maybe I'll find this to be more helpful. So right now, all I need is the MP4 file. So let me show you how that looks in your download folder. So here are those. That's the VTT transcript. This is the M4A audio. Here's the MP4. That's your video file. So I like to rename it. I'm, so, because it, otherwise it has a really crazy name. So, this is the one that I love. I don't know what you want to call it. So, when um, I now have this file saved to my computer, I can go to my YouTube account. Mine is Damn Course. Um, and then, so I'm already logged in. So, I'm going to upload a file. And then I would. Um, find that file, the MP4, on my computer, and I labeled it this is the one. Just to find it. Usually it's at the top. I must have put it someplace else. Too many 
videos in here. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what I called it. All right, well, there it is. So um, this is the one. And now when you go to upload it to YouTube, you can write all your description on it. You can select the thumbnails once those loaded. I have a playlist for my class that I've made. Um, you can just edit all these YouTube settings um, and they will let you end up having a link. Um, you can make it to where it's publicly viewed or I'll show you what it looks like. Um, you can say only people with a link can see it. So if you have it in your course, then they can see it um, uh, in the course, but nowhere else can they see it. So once you have all that done, then you can um, share that video with your students. So I just wanted to show you really quick what it looks like when you have multiple files. For this particular lecture, um, I stopped and started recording several times because I tried to break the lecture up into smaller chunks. And so here you can see was the first chunk of 16 minutes, which is a bit long. Then I had a chunk of seven minutes. Then I had a chunk of two minutes. And so each recording is its own chunk of my lecture. And so I recorded them or I downloaded them all separately and put them into YouTube as separate uh, files so that students didn't have to watch an hour long video, but they could watch little 15 minute chunks and seven minute chunks and that kind of thing. Um, and if you want examples of videos, um, I, I don't know why that would be helpful at all, but under um, DAM course and Psych 44, um, you can see I have a bunch of videos here where I did the exact same thing where I used Zoom to record my lectures and my screens so that um, I could share lectures with students um, in a way that made it easier for me to do at any time, even on a, a simple Chromebook. So if you have any questions or if there's something I forgot, let me know. Uh, good luck.